<clears throat> All right. All right, start recording now. Uh, I still see some people. Let me let this other young lady in. Okay, cool. So let me do um, introductions and we can get started. Um, keep in mind, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I know we have some shy people, but if possible, I will ask people to even open the camera and it's important, open your mic and ask questions. You know, we're trying to groom all of you to be brave enough to, you know, this is a safe space to, you know, let them see you, not just your picture. You know, you have guests that took time out from work to come and see you somewhere in different states. So it would be nice if they can see you. And I know some of you might think, but my background's messy. My room is messy. <laughs> You can blur the black background. Zoom lets you do that. But I do encourage you to um, open your camera and, and your microphone as well, uh, especially when asking questions. All right. So let, without further ado, as I say, I think if all of you know me or you might know me, my name is Andre. I'm the Graduate Business Career Coordinator here um, at the Career Development Center. Some of you have already seen in career appointments, some of you maybe not. Um, and if not, then you probably saw Michelle. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, you know, if, if any, of you look, any of you are looking for any type of career advice, you know, um, in, in any particular area that you need assistance with, then please do make an appointment with me and Michelle. We'd love to, um, we'd love to assist you when it comes to your career journey. Um, hold on, I see another student here wants to join. Let's let them in. All right. So um, let me do this. Let me just introduce our guests so we can get this started. All right. So I'm going to start with ladies since we have a lady on the panel. Uh, her name is, uh, I'm going to go by first name, Vandana, but she likes Vandy. So call her Vandy. If you don't call her Vandy, she's going to. I'm just joking. I'm just totally joking. She's like, don't, don't make me seem to be like a violent person. Totally joking. So Vandy. All right. So Vandy is um, a manager. She's a marketing analyst. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sort of say the names and the titles, but then I'm gonna have them talk about where where they work at, what they do, and and the such. All right. So on my screen next to I see, see is Maximilian, who goes my Max, all right, who is an HR data analyst and uh also and uh, also joining us from tejas texas houston texas is hanish and hanish is a senior product manager the reason why that i um reached out to these lovely people to speak is because they're all in different areas in the field of analytics from product management to data analyst to marketing analyst and that runs the gamut of the um the different programs that we have here Okay, so I thought that would be a good mix for everyone to um, to get a, a taste of when it comes to career paths. Uh, looks like we have a full house. It's like over 20 of you in here. I'm highly impressed. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to start with Vandy, and I would love it if you can, you know, share with us for now a little bit about your, your background, where you work at, and what you do. Sure. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, I'm Vandy. I am born and raised in Nigeria, Africa. I moved here to Cal State Long Beach um, for my MBA and I was in the AMBA 13 program. I, um, while, I was, while I was studying, I worked with a startup that I stumbled upon while um, I joined the incubator at Cal State Long Beach. I'm not sure if they have it yet, but I joined the incubator and um, um, there was a startup that was looking for a financial analyst or someone who could like pitch to investors. And I just vouched in, got my opportunity, my first opportunity in America, which is quite a dream. And uh, and then I, I worked my way up into getting a social media and email marketing analytics role at this company called MailPix in Huntington, Huntington Beach, where they did like photo prints, photo books, all of those things. And since I am an international student, I had to look for a company that had to sponsor H1B. So I got a job at this company where I'm currently working at. It's called Versa Products. And I started off as an email marketing manager and worked my way up as a marketing manager, come marketing analyst manager. I wore multiple hats at this company because it's quite, I mean, it's a small company. Um, they have annual revenue of like 20 to $25 million dollars but we are like trying to grow our way up from there. And um, yeah, I can share more with you after 
the other speakers and when you have questions. Sure, thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna to go to Max next since he comes up next for me on my screen. Hi everyone, um, my name is Max. So I grew up in France, uh, did an engineering degree over there and then came to the US to Cassette Long Beach, did the accelerated MBA. Um, so I had the background engineering, but wanted to also kind of get that business aspect, didn't want to be really stuck in like a technical role. Um, so after I graduated, I found a job at a ed tech company. So it's called GoGuardian. We work on software for education for schools. Um, I'm an HR data analyst, so I basically uh, work on everything HR related um, around data. Uh, I'll talk more about this later, but that's the general. Yep. Thank you, Max. And Tanish from Texas. All right. I guess I'm the one who changed a lot of companies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I moved to the U.S. back in 2015, of course, to Long Beach to study my master's uh, at Cal State. Um, after I graduated 16, I moved to Dallas to work for Verizon. I worked as a data analyst slash business analyst. Uh, after that, moved to Nashville, worked for a uh, logistics company called Siva Logistics. It's a Switzerland-based company. Um, worked as a BI engineer uh, slash business analyst. Uh, then moved to Memphis, uh, worked for FedEx uh, as a senior program manager. And uh, now I moved to Houston three months ago as a senior product manager. All of my roles were in the field of analytics, handling you know business intelligence project uh, projects or data analytics projects. So that's kind of high level background. Okay, thank you, thank you. And Hanisha, um, I know you said you moved here. Where did you move from? What country? Oh, from India. I'm India. Okay. In India. So India, France, and Nigeria. That's really, really wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, cool. All right. Now, so everybody knows I do have like a set of questions I'm going to ask, but please feel free. This is meant to be a conversation. Jump in and ask questions. You can open up your mic. And I receive, even if you want to, you can actually, if you want, raise your hand through um, Zoom, and then I will know to call on you. You can um, ask questions. But again, I'm encouraging this to be. Um, a conversation and not for everyone to sit there quietly just watching like, right? So I know people are shy, but, um, you know, grad school is the time to sort of grow out of that a little bit and try to break out of that. All right. So the question I want to ask, and I'm going to start with Maximilian or Max, then I'm going to go to Vandy, then Hanish. I would kind of love to know what um, does a typical day look like for you in your role? Yes. Um, so my role has there's a lot of different things involved so we were also a company about when i joined we were about three to four hundred now we're like a year later uh, around 800 so we grew fast and so i'm part of the hr team so i'm pr basically the only data person part of the hr team um and so a typical day there's no really typical day it just really depends on what we're working on so I work uh, on compensation. So um, we could, for example, right now we're working on the compensation review for the end of the year. So I'll be working on getting market data, getting all that, basically gathering all the data, helping our compensation manager kind of get more insight into our salaries. For example, that would be one of the work I'd be doing. Um, on another project I'd be working on would be maybe creating dashboards. So um, working in HR, um, I have access to all our people data and some of our managers, our leadership want to know, maybe get more insights on, you know, how the company's doing in terms of our people. Are people happy? Are employees, you know, engaged? Are like, what's their turnover rate? You know, all these stats on basically people metrics. So, um, so maybe I will also be working on one of these projects. So creating, so working on creating that pipeline to get the data from our systems um, through basically creating that dashboard and then it would also be a lot of kind of meeting with um, different parts of the organization, understanding you know what they're looking at, understanding their requirement, and just I think really understanding how to translate data into something where uh, a manager or leader can actually make a decision on. Um, so it would be a lot of I would say Tableau dashboarding, um, Excel maybe SQL a little bit, not too much on my role, but. Um, those are the things I would do probably in a typical day in a couple of meetings. Nice. Thank you. I think it's really interesting. I, I think sometimes people don't realize that in HR, 
you can have a data analyst role that touches on those applications or digs into data that much for company decisions. So thank you for sharing. Uh, Vandy, um, please do share. Yep. So, I mean, as Max said, there's no typical day in, uh, I think, my company. It's like every day there's something different. And I work on uh, website development as well as digital marketing. So there's a lot of web analytics tool that I have to deal with, like uh, from Google Tag Manager to Google Analytics, um, the entire Google Search Console to like our website analytics. I use Big Commerce, but I've used um, different CMSs in the past. So I, I use um, Excel, um, Google Sheets to create dashboards on Google Data Studio to show my like my boss the high level man the high level um, KPIs like the CTR the clicks the cost conversions, and uh, I work with the product product teams to understand like what what are the market driven factors and if those I mean just analyzing the market and seeing the trends on the website and trying to translate basically we have a we have a factory where we build furniture like standing desks. So we can, we have a factory floor. So literally we have an engineering team that builds a product and then we go to market. So we have to analyze the product, analyze what, what are the market trends, analyze if the product fits the market, what are the pricing, what, what are the prices in the market, analyze the competitive trends and then go to market. So it's like, there's a lot of visualization, storytelling on the website that we do as well, apart from analyzing. So it's, these are all the tools that I use on a daily basis. Thank you. Sounds really interesting. Uh, and Hanish, please uh, do share what a typical day looks like uh, for you. All right. Um, I'll, I'll divide it into two parts. Uh, one, one part is the strategic planning that I'm involved in. Usually I go out there, talk to different uh, teams, domains, uh, trying to understand what kind of analytics use case do they have that you know, my team could pick up and create a product for. So engaging with stakeholders, engaging with business partners, a uh, lot of meetings uh, uh, with different people. And, and the second part is delivery execution. So basically I lead a team of data engineers, data scientists, business analysts, and uh, quality assurance, you know, testers. Uh, basically making sure, you know, they're delivering the product according to how we planned, uh, budgeting, uh, uh, pretty much trying to make sure uh, nothing is going beyond what we've planned for, you know, to deliver and, uh, you know, communicating between leadership and my team and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much typical day, you know, a lot of meetings, a lot of talking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know a lot of meetings in my role too. Sometimes too many meetings, yeah. too many meetings. Okay. Yeah. No, there's, there's no hands-on development from my side. I, I did it in my previous roles. You know, I, I've developed dashboards like on Tableau, ClickView, Cognos, but mm -hmm. uh, did a bunch of SQL coding three years ago, four years ago. But since last three years, it's just been more of, you know, dealing with people and okay. I guess just growing into the role. Yeah, good, good. All right. So one question I did want to ask is um, from when you graduated, um, now working in the field, are there differences that you see working in the data ana analytics industry from what you actually learned at the university? I'm going to start with like Hanish on this, then go back to Vandy and then come back to Max. So again, from what you see in the field now, is there a difference to what you learned at the university? I would say yes. So in the university, you are given use cases which are kind of clear cut. So you work on them, you learn from them. It's a good, it's a good time to develop your basics and get the you know knowledge that you need to start off. Once you once you get into a corporate company, it's kind of chaotic in a way. So uh, the data is not as clean. You know, it's, it's not be like select star from this clean table to get the clean output. You know. You have to kind of struggle, mix and match data from all ends, try to understand the use case. Uh, so I would say not not really. It's not the same. But a university, you know, where you study and work on these use cases is a very good place to develop that foundation and your thinking in a certain way, which helps, you know, develop further uh, at the corporate company. Okay. Thank you, Anishan. Vandy, what's, what's your take on that? 
So I would agree, like there, it's completely different over here. Like the data that we have in, for example, the ERP system that we use SAP has data from like the past 20 years, that's all over the place. And the, the first thing I did when I entered the company was try to, I try to get the 100,000 customers data, for example, from SAP. So it's 100,000 lists. No one has ever segregated the list into the different segments like government, because we, we give the government, military, education, hospital, con normal consumers and corporations, and no one had ever done that. So just using Excel, um, of course, I, I used tools that really, that the university taught me like conditional formatting to find .gov, .mil. So that concept helped me segregate the data into what I actually wanted. So university does teach you a concept, but the outside world is like, it gives you the real problem that you got to figure out. So um, I think you need to just combine both uh, on-hand experience, like real-hand experience with the university learnings and that, that's how you go forward. Mm, thank you. And Max, do you see the same thing? Yes, I, I totally agree. I think when I joined my company as a data analyst, I really thought I had a clear cut role and this was gonna, what I was going to be doing and nothing else. And then first day, you just, you just, we just like drop you and you just have to figure everything out. So it's like, you would expect the, uh, that data would be clean and everything. And then you realize that's a mess and then you have to spend time cleaning it. So I think it just, there's a lot of things that you not won't necessarily do at school, which could, because you would just do a project on a certain task um, that you have to deal with in the corporate world where there's like talking with people to just getting, you know, their data and we're finding a way to get some data to you, cleaning some data, just working with other teams. I think there's a lot of aspects that we just, don't really, which will be hard to kind of teach in school that you can have, have to learn uh, when you're in a company, but you know, it's, it's, it's just the real world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can ask on this one, any of you can jump in. I want to, I would like to know how big is the jump, like from what you learned in school to when you step into the workforce, like how much is that jump in, in, in knowledge? Like I've talked to some students who are like, whoa, it's like, it's it's pretty big, probably bigger than they expected. Like, did any of you feel like you felt a little overwhelmed? What's up, Vandy? I, I take learning as a challenge. In fact, if I stop learning, I stop getting interested. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever I can't do anything, I go to my favorite teacher, that's YouTube, to teach me. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I enter, entered a, the company and no one taught me anything. There was no training, absolutely. And I had to figure it out by myself. So you definitely have to rely on Google and YouTube to teach you things. And it is a big learning curve for sure, but it's like, it depends on you to figure it out. I think, I think if you really want to, you can figure it out. You just got to like put your mind and heart and soul into it just to like learn. Yeah. Okay. I think Max being in HR, he may have to come up and talk to your HR team. Sounds like her onboarding wasn't the best, man. Wasn't the best. So <laughs> we won't say anything. I don't know if Max or um, Hanish wanted to add anything to the learning curve, how big it was, or maybe it wasn't that big. Yeah, I think the big difference that I noticed is like in school, we kind of give you all the rules of, of the game and it's really clear cut of kind of what you have to, what's expected of you. And in, in the corporate world, it's kind of what Vendi just said, we kind of just drop you and you kind of have to figure it out. You kind of have to learn things on your own. You, If you just wait for someone to give you instructions, you might wait a long time. So it's really about you to go get those answers. Um, so it's you really kind of get what you put into it. So it's really uh, different. Yeah, it's different in school and just that approach. Okay. Yeah, I mean, pretty much agree with what uh, both of them said. Um, I do remember when I graduated, then I, you know, started my uh, new corporate job. Uh, I was waiting for people to come give me some work to look into. <laughs> and nobody does that. You, know, you, you just can't sit there waiting. You go to them, be like, okay, how can I help you out? What do I do? And then that's when they try to give you stuff. You go figure out. And if you have to learn new things, you have to learn new things. If you don't know the tools, technologies, you go out there, start learning it. And that's pretty much how I uh, kind of worked around okay it takes some time and effort outside work too but you know mm -hmm. helps in the long run yeah. totally hear that so i know um we have some quiet uh quiet faces there if people in the chat if you can drop in a chat let us know what's the program are you and are you in marketing analytics are you the mba program msis i just want to get a feel for the room to see who's in here 
I see, uh, let me see, MSIS information systems, analytics, and marketing, MSIS information systems, online MBA. Wow, it's a mix, information systems, evening MBA as well. Wow, it's a big mix. All right. Saturday MBA. Wow, all over the place. I honestly thought this would have probably just been filled with everyone in information systems, but it, everyone's here. All right. Um, okay. So for I'm uh this is the question I'm gonna ask for the students, but um and I'm gonna ask some other questions, but I want you to think about it, maybe even drop it in the chat. I'm curious for the students and all of you attending, what are your expectations? Um uh, th this evening talking to uh, our guests like what is it that you really want to know like you can dr drop it in in the chat and I'll come back to that um, one thing going back to you know picking up on the learning curve and having to jump right in and always uh, should be seeking to learn I'm kind of curious with everyone here in in a background looking to do studying information systems or marketing or MBA business but maybe would like to learn more of like a uh, explore more what what the analytics world looks like how it relates to business i'm kind of curious what are some of the skill sets or experiences that are essential for students to know if they want to work in the field of analytics like what are some of either the the hard skills or to say the soft skills that they should know if they want to be successful in analytics i'm going to start with uh, max uh, this time and go to hanish and then Vandy. Um, I think I think just to get through the door, you're gonna need the hard skills just to get that that first job. You need to just get you know SQL, whatever you're gonna use in your job. That's definitely the base the basis that you need. But I think for me, I think the most important skill is really kind of that being able to adapt to new situation, learning fast, adapting really quickly because. For me, I didn't necessarily have any real HR experience before joining my role, um, but I found that I was able to really quickly understand what problems we're dealing with and quickly learn what, you know, what HR has to deal with. And that is really what I think is really valuable about the, the job I'm in is I'm understanding what the HR kind of general context is, and then you can apply your analytics, analytical skills to that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're trying to solve like a problem for whichever department or team you're working for. So if you don't understand the overall context, you're not able to kind of really dive deep into understanding um, how the department works, like how to you know, connect with other people, how like you can have as you can have great technical skills. But I, I remember my, one of my managers always telling me like they've had people before making a lot of dashboards that they've never used because they never really understood you know what the what we really the problem we're really trying to solve so nice. yeah you can make dashboards every day if you don't really understand what problem you're trying to solve it's it's really not that useful mm, okay okay uh hanish um any thoughts on that um from a skill set standpoint or experience standpoint there it depends on the path you want to go in so you have your project management, program management path within analytics, and then you have your technical side, data engineer, data scientist, so on and so forth. Um, if, if you wanna go towards, you know, project management, product management, uh, non-technical side of analytics, hmm. uh, I would say there are some essential things that you might wanna learn. One is learning the tool or technology from a architecture standpoint, trying to understand what does a tool do? How does it help people, uh, you know, in the field of analytics? Uh, that's one. Uh, there, there are uh, project management methodologies that a lot of companies use, like Agile. So these are some of the basics you might want to uh, learn. Uh, everybody implements it, and that kind of gives you an upper hand uh, if you want to go towards the non-technical side. Um, trying to understand the architectures, different system architectures, different uh, applications that they use, and how data flows from uh, one one source to a different, you know, let's say data warehouse and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. that's on the non-technical side. And if you want to go towards the technical side, of course, as mentioned, SQL, very important. That's the basic foundation. Um, once you learn SQL, you, you can, you know, try to learn uh, business intelligence tools, Tableau, ClickView. These are all Microsoft BI, Power BI. Uh, pretty much similar functionalities across these tools, maybe syntax differences here and there, but 
that that gives a good hand or knowledge on you know to take over analytics fields as you would have knowledge if you want to go more advanced data scientist roles then yeah that's where python uh, pro r programming comes in and that's but you have to know these basics before you even try to step on to that side of things so okay thank you you know thank you thank you for sharing that cuz um we do, I know we have students who definitely express wanting to step into like a product manager position. So even you kind of touching on that is good. Um, Andy, if I can, um, when it comes to the skills, let's make it specific maybe towards marketing. So what do you think of those technical skills and maybe those interpersonal or soft skills that are needed in that area? Sure. So for marketing, I feel like um, I needed to learn um, I had some Excel skills from school, so that was really helpful because I had to create dashboards as well on Google Data Studio. Um, so I feel Excel, if you're if you're a marketing analyst and Excel skills, just data, like understanding the data, like trying to like statistics, I mean, mm. that, that helps a lot. Uh, creating statistics, people don't like statistics. I mean, if, if you do market research, that, that is, if you do market research, you need statistics. But if you just do market analytics, mm -hmm. then it's it's good good for you to know Excel, uh, Tableau, a little bit of Tableau. SQL is a plus. I don't use it much, but I did study a little bit when I was applying for jobs. Um, in terms of, I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, because now I'm a project manager and I lead a team of seven people. So I need to communicate what needs to be changed on the website, what code needs to be added. So it's important for me to learn like what is what is CSS, HTML, JavaScript. So I, I took courses, like I, I took digital marketing courses. I took a course called shecodes.io where this, this guy teaches you like, in three months, teaches women how to, how to code in, I mean, in a short span, basically giving you an understanding of what it is. So I feel learning Google Analytics, like now there's Google Analytics 4. So it's like just learning these digital marketing tools and how to analyze them. Those are important. So Google Analytics is like is like the go-to. Right. So it's re that's really important for digital marketing. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to touch on some questions in the chat. Uh, probably like maybe two maybe three the most two and then i'm going to open up and and let you lot you know ask questions open up your mic and ask questions as opposed to me just reading them um yeah but before i do that because i know you touched on product uh uh management and marketing with hr i i do know that there are people who max there are people who want to i've known students who are like i want to get into hr information systems is that with you being an HR data analyst, that's is that the realm of what you're in? Uh, because you mentioned working on um, um, people metrics, all right? So does that all fall in the realm of HR information systems? I, I would say yes, but we have someone that's an HRIS specialist. So oh, okay. we have a person that really takes care of all the HR softwares that we have making sure you know, all the processes are working correctly, like the data is flowing where it's supposed to flow. So th there's a person in my company that's also working on that, which is kind of helping me. So I'm really focused on really just kind of getting at once that data is already, I'm just doing that analytics part, but right. yes, it's the same realm. Right, you're just really focused on the data, the data, yeah. Answer, right? Yeah, okay, excellent. All right, Um. so let's see, let me find some questions here. So let me see what kind of else can do. Uh, okay, so one question from uh, Miss Andrea. Um, I'll put this out there. What knowledge or skills do you want your non-analytics manager uh, to have in order to best utilize your role within the company? Hmm. So I guess for those of you, I guess, who are reporting to a manager, what else? Oh, maybe she's a manager. So what knowledge? do you want like a non-analytics maybe supervisor manager to have to um in order for them to best utilize your skills in in the company because i and that makes sense i guess nowadays not everyone's into data analytics so you may have to be communicating complex things to someone who just doesn't understand that information son of a uh, max you want to take that then i'll come to vandy if you want to um, hop in and hanish if you have anything to add um it's interesting. Uh, I think one of my manager that she's really good at is for me, I think one detail that I might be missing in my role is actually that really that organizational context and overview from the leadership standpoint. So for me, it's 
Um, if I'm just in my corner doing data, I don't really know what problems I'm solving. Like, so I really, I think a manager that just really knows what direction, what kind of what that person wants, like the kind of raising those questions and raising the problems, like what are we worried about? Um, yeah. Because I think that really gives me, in my role, gives me guidance into how to do that. Um, so I don't think necessarily the managers need to have any necessarily like technical skills, but if they kind of have that overall context on understanding what problem we're trying to solve, I can bring the solution. I just really need, feel, in my role, I really need someone to just kind of explain at the company level what problems or KPIs we need, what problems we are looking at, you know, so that I can just solve that. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'm sure, Vandy, if you wanted to add to it, Vandy, do you want to add something to that? Uh, no, same thing. Understanding the strategic big, big picture of the company would be important for us to, to give us guidance. Right. Helps you know how your work fits into the larger picture, pretty much. Um, maybe one point is when you're a VP or director, I have a VP who's who doesn't have an analytics background. Uh, I would have an expectation that that person is open to ideas, is open to feedback, and is open to talking to people on the ground. Okay, usually you're a VP, you're not really, you know, hands-on, you know, in-depth level, but at least I would say, you know, try to understand how is it on the ground versus how they promise their leadership, you know, that there's always that disconnect between the troops on the ground and the upper management. So yeah. I think that's, that's one thing very important. Second thing is a lot of one-on-ones, of course, uh, with uh, individual contributors. Um, I think one thing I would say is maybe, you know, learning the processes, kind of like the project management methodologies, mm. uh, you know, a lot of companies implementing different methodologies, Agile, Kanban, Scrum, whatnot. And I think an understanding of that would help them uh, learn the pace at which a particular solution can be uh, uh, developed and uh, delivered. Uh, Analytics is a journey, right? It's, it's, it's mm. not an instantaneous solution for your problems. So that's something they need to be open towards. Thank you. That's Thank my observation. You. That's a good observation. Uh, Vandy, I'm gonna direct this question to you. So one of our students, Shivani, would like to know, she said, I'd like to know what level of analytics may be required for a marketing analyst position. What level of analytics? Yeah, analytics may be required. Um, maybe um level of is that um knowledge base or experience try like knowledge base sure so i mean it depends from company to company but i did a lot of research and i did a lot i studied a lot um of sql tableau before while applying for jobs so it it didn't not come into a lot of use for me because my role had a lot of data, Google Data Studio or Excel requirements for me to learn. But I feel maybe other companies, they did require having experience in Marketo, HubSpot. Like these are the different CRM tools that many companies are using right now. Salesforce, um, having good web analytics um, experience. Like for example, if you're using Shopify or BigCommerce, like exporting data from there and analyzing like the sale trends, mm -hmm. analyzing the inventory forecast, like requirements. So I feel it's a lot of, um, you have to play with a lot of numbers when you're working with website. And I think Excel is the most helpful tool for me, but other companies have different uh, analytic tools that they use, but having a basic understanding of SQL, Tableau, Excel are really important. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, another question that uh, Priyanka had was, how difficult was it for all of you to enter as an entry level, uh, in an entry level data analyst analyst role? Um, and maybe that's even more so towards maybe Max or Hanish. Like, was it difficult or was it a challenge to get an entry level position coming out of school? Go Hanish first. Um, so here's the key. The key is networking. That's mm. very important. That's as you, you come on. They don't want to hear that, Hanish. Come yeah. on. <laughs> I, okay, when I was a grad school student, I was really afraid and shy, whatever you want to call it, to go out there in those networking events where I don't know anybody. And, you know, it, it was really tough. But what I've learned over the years is 
people tend to hire people they know than people they don't. So that's your key. If you have the skills, you have the basic knowledge, some people are open to give you that opportunity. And if you want that opportunity, the key is to network. Um, if, if, if that's something you're not really comfortable with yet, I would say apply and apply forever. Like the more you apply, the higher the probability you get something. So be open to moving, relocating. If, if you're gonna be picky that I'm gonna find a job only in within a certain city, then that's gonna drastically reduce your chances. Like I moved almost three states, five cities, mm. wherever I get opportunities. So I think that's your alternative option. Mm. Okay, so thank you. Please. Thank you. Not sure if you wanted to add to that, Max, or? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, um, I I got my job from networking too. Um, it, I don't, they wouldn't have created that position if it wasn't for networking. So it, it, same thing. So I, I, I applied to a lot of jobs too and never really got an answer. And now being on the other side in the HR team, looking at our, like all the people applying, there's a lot of people applying. So it's really hard to just kind of, with a paper resume to just stand out. Uh, it's way easier to stand out in person. Um, and I don't think my resume would have passed any of our like screening if it was just my resume. So I really think it's important. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, what you both touched on is, I think you both nailed it right on the head. I'm gonna ask one more question, then I'm gonna have students open up their mic and they can ask the question, but this is gonna be for all three. And Vandy, you wanna say something? Yes. Go ahead, yeah. please. So same here, like I joined the incubator at Cal Long Beach. And out of like 30 people in my class, there were only two people who joined me and one more person. And it, I got my first opportunity in America. The fall, I came in August 2017 and September, I got a job with, wow. with the startup because uh, it's just, you have to keep applying. And it's so tough out there with the number of applications that every HR receives. So, like you have, I mean, how do you stand out? Like it's, it's so tough. Yeah. So how, how much ever you decorate your resume with with so many things, it's not going to like, it, it's not going to stand out. So uh, you, how much ever you hate networking, do it. Like I know, <laughs> I know uh, he said to go apply. Yes, I had an Excel sheet that showed like hundreds of jo jobs I applied to, which country, which state, which link, everything. Like I had it all organized. Nothing helped, nothing. Like I had to go to the incubator. I had to, I still go for Cal State Long Beach networking sessions. I love networking. I still go to Santa Monica, like to the bungalow. They have a lot of Google tech networking events. Go out there, put yourself out there, speak to people, have your punchline. And guess what? Like Bert, do you know Bert? Yep. Mm -hmm. so he was, he helped me put my resume in the resume book in Cal State Long Beach. And one and a half years after working with the startup in February of last, last year, like I got a call from, the company that I um, that I got in second with Huntington Beach. So they they said that they found my resume in the resume book. I applied, went for it, and I got it. Like it's just that like even Cal State Long Beach take advantage of the resources that you have over there because people are there to help you. So go out there, speak to Michelle, speak to Andre, like speak to all of them. Get I asked Michelle to like interview me and to judge me and just like give me a grade for each. Like I did all of it because I'm an international student. You have to go through like the mud to get a job. So definitely network, definitely get the help that you that you can from Kelsey Long Beach. Thank you, thank you. And I think you you nailed it with networking. And yeah, I think in Santa Monica, is that um, Silicon Beach? They call it out there, Silicon Beach events. I think is what they call it out there. Yeah, so. yeah, and it's called the tech event. Tech event, yeah. Google, it's it's sponsored by Google. Okay. And they used to have it like every month, like end of the month. Um, oh, wow. That I didn't know. There's so many events out there. Go to Eventbrite, go to just Google networking events near me. You're going to find a bunch. Go for it. Speak to people. Say, hey, and give your pitch line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Shivani, I think you had your hand up. You're going to ask a question. You're going to unmute and ask a question. And if not, I was going to ask another one. Oh, no, no, I was just like a clapping reaction because okay. it's really nice to hear from you guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And let me, Max, are you were you an international student as well? Let me say, well, all I know, Vandy for sure. Max, no, not international. Okay, Hanish, yeah. On so you, so both of you, Hanish and Vandy, were able to get sponsorship. Both yep. of you, congratulations. It was, yeah, it was rough. It was, it's not easy. That's for sure. 
but you know even if you get an employer who wants to sponsor you it's still a lottery system yeah unless unless you go through a non-profit uh, mm-hmm. company mm-hmm. or a non-profit hospital that's a trick guys go apply for non-profits <laughs> it's true though because they don't have an uh a cap on how many people they can Correct. take yep. yeah all right so uh any questions i want to open up the floor any questions before i ask any now let me let me ask this so normally what we do during this time is we open up a uh, breakout room so you have some time to talk one-on-one um is that something that the group would like me to do would you like me to open up breakout rooms or would you rather keep the floor open and we just ask questions and have this dialogue back and forth so um let me know in the chat if you'd rather just me open up breakout rooms and everyone just sort of hops into the room and can talk to our guest um, in small groups. People are saying it's thankful. Thank you so much. I am okay staying longer as I feel okay. Tennis questions. Okay, thank you very much, Anish. Prefer it. Everyone hasn't said anything. All right, so let me continue. Let me continue. Let me see here. Enjoying the open concept. All right, so I'll keep it this way. All right, so one question that was asked was preparing for interviews. So I want to go across the board. So like someone wants to step into product management, someone wants to get into data analyst roles, someone wants to go to marketing. What is the best way that you would recommend to prepare for for data analyst roles, roles in analytics, particularly in your fields of what you do? I'll start with Vandy, then Max, then Hanish. I did a lot of LinkedIn learning courses and I, I did like courses from UCLA, like online courses that helped me a lot, like just learning the concept of SQL, data analytics, um, Tableau, like those are the courses I pursued and it helped me during my interviews to answer like these, the analytical questions. And to, like we had to also, if you reach the third round, they ask you to like create a project and analyze certain Excel sheets with a lot of uh, intricate details. So it like it's really important to have like the analytics um, Excel. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I believe I said Max. Um, yep. Pretty much same here. LinkedIn Learning was also that's something I did a lot, and I still do. Now we we have that at work too. Um, I think uh, being a student, you also get access for, to a lot of like softwares for free for like Tableau. I know, I think I have like a year. For, I mean, I think if you're a student, you can get a year for free, something like that. Yeah. So I remember downloading it and just kind of creating my own project, just kind of creating a dashboard out of, for me, it was like, I downloaded my Spotify data. You can do that and just kind of create my own dashboard and just, you know, just so you have kind of a project, if you don't necessarily have it at school, just to train first and to have something to talk about. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I would do. Okay, excellent. I do recommend them that they do projects and build projects, and that will help you. Like you said, you have something to talk about on your resume when you're in an interview. So, yeah. Hanish, um, any gems you wanted to share? Um, wh- one thing I've done, um, you know, in the beginning of my career, trying to apply for jobs with not much experience, is I tried to go out there and find nonprofits to mm-hmm. work for. These are not the paid nonprofits, like, you know, the big hospitals or anything of that sort. Mm. smaller ones, free work, you know, uh, volunteering work. And I did work for a DC based nonprofit uh, called Murder Accountability Project. They had a bunch of uh, homicide data we had to analyze and, you know, connect and show serial killings across the United States. So this is one of the projects I worked on and I put it on my resume and it caught a lot of attention from the, you know, the interview panel. So that's something you should explore is go out there. There are so many uh, websites uh, which have these non nonprofit volunteering opportunities in terms of data analysis. You can go out there, grab these projects, get them done, put them on your profile and market yourself using those in case you don't have previous experience yeah. um, in any other corporate companies. Yeah. So that's that's one tip I look at. That's a serious tip. And Hanish, let me just say this. I am pretty sure that your parents, when you when you came up with that data set, your parents like, when they saw that data about serial kids, they probably told you come back home to, to, to India, right? They said, <laughs> don't stay there. You got to come back. <laughs> America's a crazy place, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm dropping a link in the, um, yes, super insightful. Yes, I agree. Uh, Leticia, I believe it's Leticia. So I just dropped a link in the chat for a survey. If you can just take the time. It's a two-minute survey. You can do it now while we're talking. Um, but I just would love to get feedback. So it helps us in regards to programming. Um, 
All right. Uh, one thing I did wanted to ask all of you, and I will go from the other way. I'll start with Hanish, Max, and then Vandy, um, is what um, does a career path look like for someone who wants to, to go down the road that you're going? Someone who wants to, I really want to be product manager. Someone who wants to be a data analyst, even the HR data analyst. Someone who wants to be in marketing. What does that career path look like? Uh, to start off as a product manager, you mean, or or to get there eventually? It's, 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 okay, because yeah. you might not start there. Maybe. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so typically, when you you know apply for a company based on your experience, you know, if you, if you are an entry level, you would start off you know as an analyst, and then there are like different levels of analysts in a typical company: one, two, three, and then senior. Uh, that that's that's how it starts uh, for me uh, i started off as a data analyst uh, went on to senior business analyst and then towards program management and product management so uh, some of them were lateral moves and some of them were you know vertical moves so that's that's the way i see it and from there on of course you have two paths um, you either go into leadership you know people management um, or you go towards the technical path where you're, you become a senior developer um, and then you go into possibly solution architecture or you design the application and how it uh, you know, uh, communicates with other applications. So that's kind of the career paths that, that are available. Thank you, thank you. And Max, someone who just says, hey, you know what, I really am passionate about data. I really wanna be a data analyst. What does that career path look like? Um, I think for, for my role or something similar, um, you could go two ways. I think you could either start in a certain department, whether it's HR or finance and just kind of whatever, if it's an HRS person or just getting kind of that, if you get that business context already, and then you decide, then you have some analytical skills, you get, maybe, maybe you take some classes and then you could kind of shift to that data analyst career within that department that you already liked. Or you can go the other way, which is more like general, being really analytical, kind of working on all sorts of projects, whether it's HR, finance, uh, marketing, product, and then kind of if you if there's one area that you like more, you could kind of specialize in that and be really an HR data analyst or, you know, um, more than just a BI analyst kind of specializing in one area. So I think there's two ways of going, like starting with analytics or starting with that business and then just kind of mixing both. Okay. Cool. And Vandy, your thoughts on, and someone says, I love marketing, want to get into marketing analytics. What does that career path look like? Especially for someone who's starting out, maybe they don't have a lot of, they don't have any experience really in marketing. You know, what does that look like? Sure. I had no experience in marketing. I came from an accounting and finance background. Wow. And when I came here, I was like, I, I knew that was not my cup of tea, accounting and finance. That's why I left my job and I came here to do my MBA. And I had no experience. That's why I stumbled upon a very small startup at Cal State Long Beach. And I became like a business development analyst. I guess I just was given the role, but I was no analyst over there. I was trying to do everything, like mm -hmm. from trying to analyze financial statements to pitching to investors to uh, going to the market and trying to like pitch to like different fitness studios because it was a fitness product to going to trade shows. So I felt like I learned a lot of marketing. Just, I mean, you just take any company, you know, like as Ani said, like go, go to a nonprofit, just get, get some experience on your books. I, I didn't get paid much when I was working for a startup. I just did it because I wanted the experience. Mm. So I learned about website. I learned about uh, Instagram, Facebook marketing. Like I didn't know any of that. So that, that, that took that experience of one and a half years in that field took me to an email and social media marketing analyst background. And that's when I learned more about, oh, oh, this is email marketing. Okay. This is how you analyze the data from there, open rates, click rates. And then that experience took me to my current company where they hired me as an email marketing manager. And then I went up the ladder, but it, it's just like, whatever comes to you, don't pick and choose, like get the experience, um, learn, just keep learning. I took a lot of digital marketing courses. I wanted to go to SDSU, but I did like a online course during COVID. Mm -hmm. Like just take all the courses that you can and work for any company and get any experience that you can, just because you want to start out in that field. 
And and once you grow in marketing, you'll realize there's a lot of um, there are a lot of special specialties. Like you have email marketing specialists, you have face uh, like social media marketing specialists, and you have web analytics specialists. So there are so many areas that you could specialize in. But for now, just start off and get some experience with some Excel, a little bit of Google Sheets, a little bit of Tableau. Um, get some experience from a company and then move up the ladder. So even in marketing, yeah, Excel is still popular. It looks like Excel is just never going away. So, <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I know we have about six more minutes before we wrap things up. I know Hanish did mention he can hang on a little bit if student had some questions beyond 6.30. Um, one thing, uh, since time is of the essence, I did want to ask all of you, and I'll start with Van D, then go to Hanish and Max. Uh, you can give your input if you like, is um, how do you see the data analytics or the analytics industry evolving, um, especially with the development of AI and machine learning? How do you see this uh, affecting your work, your job function? You know, good, bad, will you have a job? You know, like, how do you see that? I think data analytics is increasingly being used by startups, large organizations, and it's it's growing. Like, I think it's changing, it's growing, it's updating. And our role is becoming even more important if we learn the right skills and the updated tools that are coming into the market. Because there are a lot of marketing tools that are trying to take over our job. But as a human being, like you are going to analyze the data. And I don't think so. Machine algorithms uh, would replace us in data analytics because we end up making decisions based on the data that we analyze. Mm -hmm. So it's it's increase everyone's using data analytics to reduce costs, to optimize processes, to have better targeted marketing. So I feel in addition to all of this, like we need to just gain the skills that are that are um, coming up in the market with a blink of an eye, the technology is changing. Mm -hmm. so like keep updating your skills just to be relevant in this current market. Mm, I agree. Um, Max, I think I said Max, is it Hanish? Hanish, then Max, right? Who did I? All right. Go ahead. Yeah. No worries. Um, so I think last year or the year before is when I learned that data surpassed in value compared to oil in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So it's the most valuable thing. So that's when I understood that I made a right career choice in a way. <laughs> <laughs> so having said that, um, I think in terms of the future, it's, it's definitely the future. All companies are trying to adapt, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, in some form or fashion. There's only so much a company can grow in terms of business and, uh, you know, earning revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only way they could make more money is by automating. And these are the ways that they could use to automate. I worked in different industries, telecommunications, uh, logistics, and right now I'm in a I'm in the utility industry, and everybody is trying to automate and cut costs, especially standard industries which are logistics and utilities, compared to you know tech-based companies, which are always looking to automate and you know have the latest technology. These in standard industries, which are which usually take a very long time to evolve and change are moving at a rapid pace. So they are implementing new technologies, trying to automate their, let's say, warehouse process. You see Amazon, yeah. the only reason you get it in one day, two day delivery is because their logistics uh, facilities are automated with all these robots, uh, architected using artificial intelligence, um, so on and so forth. So uh, I guess it is the future and it's something where everybody should look for their careers. Even if you want to go towards leadership in future, upper yeah. management, um, I think having a good grasp on data and understanding how the story flows for the company really helps uh, to grow to that position. Yeah. And I, I just to tag on what you said about Amazon, I was reading an article the other day where it says Amazon, Amazon loses about a billion a year, I think, in attrition within workers in the warehouse leaving. And I'm sitting there thinking, I am sure that Jeff, Bezos and that team are trying to find a way, this might sound really bad, but I think that ultimately they're trying to find a way to get every single human being out of a warehouse and just put robot robotics in there. I really think so. Yeah. I think so. And and one thing to remember is everybody is replaceable in a company. So there's, there's no situation in time or uh, place where 
you might think you're you know unbeatable so it's always good to learn evolve and move on and change and adapt as needed so that's my learning over the years thank you thank you i know we're coming up on time i would love it max if you can Share your thoughts on where you think um, the future is going with analytics, data analytics, with especially AI, machine learning, and as it relates to just being a data analyst. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think more and more data is just in the heart of, of every company. I, I, even like people analytics wasn't really a thing a couple of years ago. It's completely new. Yeah. Um, so we're just seeing that the companies are just always investing in data. Um, so I think if you stay up to the trend and just like learning the new technologies and you're in that field, there's definitely work for, for a long time. Not worried about that. <laughs> nice. Nice. I know it's like 629. Uh, that's not the time in Texas. I think it's what 829 over there probably, I think. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't know if there's any um, final question. I don't want to, I know students may have classes and I don't want to hold our guests uh, long. I think Hanish did say you can hang around if some people have some questions, but um, any Final thoughts um, from uh, any of the students. Any final questions? Everyone's quiet. Didn't they all just tell you to network and talk and say so? I thought Vandy just said to you, and all of them said that, and you're all quiet. What, what, what am I going to do with all of you? Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, I just want to give everyone a round of applause. If you at least give them like a, a Zoom clap. Um, for coming out. I want to thank all of you, uh, Vandy, Max, Hanish, for sharing your time, taking time out of your busy schedule to come and talk. Um, I, I was reaching out to them months ago, asking them, and all of them were kind enough to say that they would come here and share their experience with all of you. So uh, humbly, totally appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, if students wanted to, any of them wanted to stay in touch with you, uh, what would be the best way to do that, uh, Max or Vandy? What would be the best way if they wanted to? You can reach me out on LinkedIn if you like. I can share my link. Okay, I'll make them do some work. They'll they'll find you on there, right? So yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah, but I, I'll do that. I'll see if I can. I'll go ahead and send um, the link to to all of our guests here on. Um, or on LinkedIn. So if you haven't um, filled out the survey, please do that. Again, I wanted to um, thank our guests. Um, I'm going to hang around for a little bit. Um, if any student wants as well, I don't know if Hanish, if you want to hang out a second or two in case there's one or two who wanted to ask any last minute questions, but uh, I'm going to let everyone's free to, to take off if they want to. Thank um, Same thing, Vandy, Max, you can hang around if you can take off. I'm pretty sure you have other things that you can be getting into right now. It looks like it's dark. I'm seeing out the window. I'm seeing the sun's gone down. So thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Max. And um, thank you, everyone, for attending. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Let's see if anyone has any uh, final questions. I see some people hanging out here. Everyone's quiet. Everyone's kind of waiting for someone else to say something. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, just a, a, a few quick things. Um, so I'm in the AMBA program right now and obviously not very emphasized on analytics or much technical work, very much like kind of just fundamentals, you can say, like basic introductions to like marketing and information systems or mainly just business statistics and like resource management. So I guess like what are some things you did outside of the classroom while you were still in class to mm -hmm. kind of prepare yourself for the roles that you're in now? And then also a specific question to Hanish, how like was it just the networking or was there some skills that you have that made you so like uh like gave you the capability to kind of branch out into so many different industries. All right. Um, Randy, you want to go first? I mean, I can take it. Okay. All right. Um, all right. That's a broad question. So in terms of skills that I had, okay, fair enough. My, my undergrad, I, it's in computer science engineering. Um, so I kind of get the technical stuff. You know, I can look at some code and understand what's happening. Uh, but the most important thing that I've learned is storytelling. Everybody is interested in stories. If you're able to portray your story 
or let's say your passion, skills, anything of that sort in a networking event or for different people that you meet that really gives them uh, an impression that you know, you're interested in a certain field and when they have a certain job opening, it hits them, okay, hey, I met this guy who was interested. I might reach out and see. So that's one of the factors. Uh, second thing is I would say YouTube is, is a good place to start. Uh, you don't have to really learn coding. Like I don't do, it's been four years since I've done coding and you don't really have to do coding, but if, if you're able to understand what a certain tool does, how it can be used and uh, the architecture behind it, meaning how does a data flow from A to B and what are the tools that are used to make the data move? You don't have to do anything from a coding level, only from a uh, you know theoretical standpoint trying to understand you know, what's happening. That, that gives you a, a upper hand over a lot of people. This is what um, you did outside of class? You said this is what you did outside of class? It's like the YouTube? Yeah. Mm. yeah, YouTube. There's a, a website called Udemy. It's like mm. 10 bucks and there are all these instructors who give you really good in detail classes. You can try that. Uh, there is, uh, I believe, EDX, which has courses from Stanford, MIT, these are all free. So they, they start from the basics and that really helps you a lot. Um, and apart from that, try to grab a nonprofit opportunity or an internship opportunity if you can, which you know, starts from you know, uh, basics and that, that really helps you a lot. But having said that, networking is very <laughs> helpful. Like try to make friends with the CEO and you'll see. <laughs> Okay, I don't expect that, but I did make some friends with different VPs and I didn't do it during my grad school. After my grad school, some of my friends made friends with VPs and I asked them to introduce and then, you know, you just have this casual conversation about their job and how they got to their position and, and then you stay in touch in a way. It doesn't all necessarily be like, okay, hey, do you have a job for me? Right. It doesn't have to be that all the time. So I think these are some of the steps you can take to really differentiate yourself from a lot of people, because if you're just applying jobs online, that's what everybody else is doing. So, yeah, I, I hope that helps. Yeah, yeah. Bandy, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm currently doing an internship right now in in logistics. It's like a distribution company, and I mean, it's, okay. it's yeah, it's it's small, it's successful. You know, like 30, 40 mil revenue. Um, but yeah, one of the things I did notice is that kind of their their systems are like really outdated. Mm. And they deal a lot with like paperwork and stuff like that. And it kind of wasn't what I was expecting coming into it. I thought I was going to learn all these different like softwares and stuff like that. And yeah. Yeah. yeah being in logistics. Yeah. They're, they're pretty outdated softwares. It, it takes them a lot of money to upgrade because yeah. they're so customized. So that's usually tricky for them. Um, but you could always try bigger companies like Amazon, Siva Logistics, uh, FedEx, they have plenty of internships and jobs. And I think they are much better off compared to, you know, you know, a smaller enterprise in logistics area. Yeah. I think, Bandy, you were going to share also your thing. Um, no, I was saying Udemy really helped me a lot too. Like if you want to learn basic courses, like from scratch, Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, um, YouTube, just, I, I read a lot of marketing books. This is marketing by Seth Godin. Mm -hmm. um, speaking to a lot of people, I like networking, you, you can't talk less about it. Like that's what got me to where I am right now. And uh, I wouldn't have been here if I didn't open my mouth and just speak to people. Like you just have to show your face out there. If you yeah. don't, you're losing out on a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So on, mm. Sorry, I have on, to- On the same point. Okay, oh. thank you, Wendy, take care. All right. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. So I just want to share one uh, point is my previous manager at FedEx told me this. It's called the pie strategy, um, P-I-E, which is, you know, the pie chart itself. Mm -hmm. um, basically, P is performance, I is impact, and E is exposure. Performance is 10%, impact is 20%, and the remaining 70% is exposure. No matter how much you perform, how much impact you have, if people don't give you the visibility, or if you don't have that visibility, you're probably not gonna get very far in your career unless you have a super nice manager. You know, again, they have to give you that visibility. You know, to say that hey, 
this guy or girl is performing and I want them to grow and get promoted. Same thing with networking. And you said performance was what, 10% and impact was 20%? 20%. And uh, exposure 70%. 70%. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, I like that. I like that. I didn't hear yeah. that. So, uh, Mansi or Priyanka or Alan, did you have any questions? No. No, no, okay, just as I, 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 I do, sure. Okay. One sec, sorry. Sure, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, I, I uh, am an MBA student right now in the MBA program. And um, I was an IS undergrad um, from CSOP as well. So I actually did the, the business intelligence certificate as well. So I, I've sort of, you know, I... I have very uh, sort of limited experience, but I did sort of, you know, SQL, um, SAP, we did R, you know, I learned a Python, but it's all very sort of rudimentary, sort of just basics, getting an understanding. Um, but, you know, I think my, my resume looks very nice, right? So I think <laughs> I think I have all the initials to, to get, you know, a call back. But um, when I see all these job descriptions there's a lot of stuff with sort of big data there's a lot of um you know where i don't really feel like i'm at the level uh needed to fulfill the roles so you know i have some of the skills and just it's sort of you know very basic understanding so i'm just curious it, it feels like there's a big jump there so i feel I, I i'm missing something to get me um to where you know i'm able to do the jobs that i need um, so if, if, if you're saying that you're not getting callbacks, is that what you're saying when you apply for jobs such as these? No, I, I, no, I am. I, I think that the question is, um, I, I feel like a lot of these jobs in particular require experience with big data. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm seeing a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it was a Hadoop and uh, all this, these other things, which I don't really have experience in. So I, I, I'm able to get sort of, you know, people to call me back. But I just I, I don't feel like my skill set is where the jobs require. Yeah. Right. So yeah, un un unfortunately, I know you you can't learn all the tools, you can't work on all the tools and technologies. You know, different companies use different set, but the concept behind those tools are similar. You know, pretty much all BI tools are similar. Data warehousing is similar across. It might be Oracle, Microsoft, or AWS. It's it's the concept, the architecture is similar. Um, I would say if if it's if it's getting harder to kind of jump companies because of this limitation in tools and not having enough experience that they keep saying, although you know they're not very organized themselves. But uh, <laughs> uh, I would say you might want to pivot your strategy a little bit. You know, try to find jobs which don't require hands-on experience. Let's say a business analyst job. Mm -hmm. That's that's more to do with learning the concepts behind these tools and technologies, and then you 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 try to get that uh, position, enter the gate, you know, enter the company, and then you can once you get into the company, it's easier to you know usually they hire or promote within. So that's that's one strategy that I would say you know for this situation. Yeah, and, and I was gonna I was gonna ask real quick. So Alan, is it? Because you're seeing that on job descriptions, is that preventing you from applying? Are you thinking, uh, I'm not going to apply because I don't want them to ask me about that and I don't know X, Y, Z? It is, it is. Yeah, I feel like maybe I'm not to the level that I need to be um, for these positions that I'm saying. Right. So, so one thing I would say on the job description, you definitely don't need to know 100% of what's on there. I would say if you're... Uh, 75, 80%, if you feel you can do 80%, go for it. They don't expect you to know all the tools. And many times they throw a lot of stuff on that job description, but they look for maybe what's preferred. If, or, if, or if you look in a job description, they keep mentioning a certain thing, pops up a lot of times like SQL, 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 Python, 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 Python comes up a lot, then you know, okay, that's probably what I need to focus on for that. Hadoop is probably just in one of the preferred applications, but it's not they maybe don't even really use it that much, you know, but um, so that's how I would look at that. And then also um, I, I would look to say, all right, well, maybe what's an area that I think I would like to maybe niche down in, right? Because it, 
niche in something that's maybe broad, even like maybe just looking at things like, I don't know if you would even be interested in things that maybe SQL developer or like Kanisha saying, a, a business analyst. They're broad enough, but it's specific enough where you can kind of get in the door and, and build from there. That makes sense. Yeah. And on the, on the same lines that Andrew mentioned, he's absolutely right. So, you know, you don't want a job that you're a hundred percent at because you have nothing to learn and grow for you would not be motivated anymore. Uh, uh, so uh, having said that, usually the job postings are done by HR department and based on what, you know, semi-information from the hiring manager and then whatever they have in their file, they kind of mix and put it out there. Doesn't necessarily mean that the hiring manager is looking for that specific skills as well. You, you, you just want to throw the application in there you know, someday the hiring manager is going to wake up and is like, okay, I don't find any other people. I've seen this guy who has similar experience. So, you know, I might as well consider him and, uh, you know, give an interview chance. So just because you don't meet it, put it in there. Like if, if there were CEO jobs open, I would just go apply for the sake of it. Yeah. What's there to lose? There's, <laughs> there's nothing to lose. Right, the worst thing is All you, say, you no. need is one job, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know it's about six forty-five, and we're going to be pretty much wrapping things up. Uh, Priyanka. Yeah, yeah, I have, oh, I have a question. Go for it, young lady. Sure. I uh, yeah, I actually wanted to ask that uh, I have been experienced for about two point five years, but it's not exactly related to the field. Like I was a test analyst. But if I want to showcase that experience in some way related, can I do that? Like uh, in my resume, if I want, if I'm keeping an experience uh, and I want to show something like that, so should I tweak it a little or should I? And that's the and just to clarify, now I'm going to have Hanish to touch, uh, answer this. 2.5 years in what, what was the, the, the role experience? Uh, it test, uh, okay, testing. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, and you want to relate it to it, analytics. Is what you want? Um, is that what's the goal? What's the uh, goal you're looking? Uh, well, yeah, I'm looking at data analytics okay. positions and mainly to data scientists, actually. But yeah. Okay, so if if your you know testing experience has been in certain applications which you could relate it to analytics, meaning meaning a certain domain, uh, you know a certain industry or uh, or a certain architecture behind that system, which helps you in your data analytics, yes, you can tweak it and word it in that way, as long as you're able to justify it during the interview. You know, mm -hmm. they only ba go based off of what you talk to them in the interview. They necessarily don't go and do a check of, hey, did you actually work on that hands-on? Yeah. Did you code a certain line in a certain company? They're not going to do that. So it's it's a matter of how much you could convince that you're suitable for the job. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it does not, but that's okay. That's part of experience and just move on to the next company. There are hundreds of companies, so there's nothing to lose. True. Also, people say that you have to change your job uh, resume for every role you're applying to according to the job description. So how mm. does like, so yeah, what's your view on that? Yeah, not, not necessarily. That's just too much work and too much pressure to do that for every single job. But I would say if, if you're applying, you know, let's say analytics domain, right? So you would have a resume for that specific domain. Mm -hmm. If you're going to a completely different industry like healthcare or biotech, then you might want to tweak your resume or else you can keep it a bit generic. And, and also one more tip for resume is have a story in there. I see a lot of people put information like, okay, I saved 95% of a certain cost or 95% improvement in a certain process. But as a hiring manager, I wouldn't know what process, what are you talking about? So have a little brief background of what is that you've done as a part of your you know, previous job and what, and then you add that metric of 95% in a certain process so that we can relate to what project you're talking about. So don't, you don't have to put one liner bullet points all the time. I did that before. And then I changed it to a storytelling mode as I got more experience because that's more easier for the recruiter to understand. 
than uh, having one-liners. You can check out my LinkedIn. That will probably help you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, and I definitely think having the, the story format like that it helps a lot on LinkedIn. Like, I don't think your LinkedIn needs to mirror your resume per se. You can, I always say LinkedIn, you can just kind of whet the appetite a little bit where they'll ask you to see like your resume. And, and, and yeah, you don't need to like completely change up your resume for everything. I think the main thing that I would say is just make sure, look at the job description, see what are the main keywords that keep coming up and just make sure you pepper your resume with that. Because what you're, what you're really looking at is an applicant. It's a software that may be looking at the resume, not a human being. If your resume was in the hands of a recruiter, they can look at it and say, oh yeah, I get it. But a, a, an applicant tracking system and stuff, a bot doesn't, doesn't know. It's just scanning for some keywords. If it doesn't see it, it can spit it out, but you can be the perfect person for the role. So I would say you don't need to completely change up your resume. But do make sure that you're hitting some of the keywords that are clearly on the job description so they it shows up if a software is analyzing it. And and one other tip is when you go onto LinkedIn, add different uh, recruiters, HR people from different companies because they post jobs in their you know wall, yeah. and that really helps. When, when they post, you can just go reach out to them saying, hey, I feel I'm a good fit and so on and so forth. So just go out there, say, you know, in the search bar, say HR at Amazon, HR at Facebook, HR at whatever company, you'll find a bunch of people in the results. Just, just add them up. It's okay. Yeah. It's LinkedIn. So. Yeah. And recruiters don't mind if you add them because they don't want to have to do so much work looking and looking and looking. They would love it if they boom off the bat, they find someone good. Great. So if you help, you're helping them out by connecting with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. thank you so much yeah all right so um thank you hanish appreciate it man um all of you are absolutely wonderful and um hopefully maybe we can do this again in the future you know so yeah absolutely all right, all right. have a good night thank everyone all right you too thanks and hanish take care bye bye, -bye.